think I think I was born to be a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you why. Mm -hmm. When my mom would give me twenty dollars, mm -hmm. I literally would hook up the hood. Mm. You know, That's Ice awesome. Man come. Awesome. We got in New York. We got Mr. Softy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Softy come down the street. <laughs> I'm breaking people off. Like yo, y'all right. want some? Welcome to the Release the Chains podcast, where we have real, raw, and revolutionary discussions helping people release their mental, emotional, financial, and generational change. Today, I am here with the amazing Rob Young B. Young, I'm sorry, YB. Let me get that right. This is Rob YB Youngblood. He is here coming from Richmond, Virginia. I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself and what mm -hmm. he does in this world that helps people in their businesses and their lives. So tell us a little bit about absolutely, yourself, Absolutely, absolutely. So Rob YB Youngblood, uh, native of the Bronx, New York. Okay. I uh, live in Richmond, Virginia. I've actually lived in Richmond longer than I lived in New York, but I cannot claim Richmond, Virginia uh, simply because if somebody asked me what high school I went to, I couldn't tell them. Okay. So therefore, okay. I couldn't claim it. Uh, I love it. I uh, coach women entrepreneurs who mm -hmm. struggle when it comes to selling, networking, and leveraging LinkedIn as a tool for attracting mm -hmm. new business. Uh, I'm happily married uh, for going on 16 years and I have two nice. beautiful daughters. That's amazing. Let's give it up. Let's do a quick clap, clap, yeah, clap for that. that. 16 appreciate years that. married. I love it. So what do you think has been that, that, wow, I, you know, I'm, you probably get access a lot because I've been married about mm, oh Lord, 18 years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, what is, what do you think has helped you? hold on for so long to the love of your life? Oh, man. I think the first thing is because my wife is a strong woman. Mm. Um, we both came from single parent homes. And so we know the importance of maintaining our relationship, not only just for us, but for the sake of our children. Mm -hmm. When you talk about breaking generational curses, it's like we're, we're the ones that, yeah. that need to do that. Yeah. Um, I think we started off on a solid foundation. We had a bunch of elders that we saw had that had successful marriages so even though we didn't come from uh, a house where our parents were married we had mentors mm -hmm. who were married and so they poured into us and and it, and it also helps that she had a godfather that was a marine that was a little crazy that said if you're doing things slick with my my goddaughter i'm just remember i'm a marine i know that's right yeah, put a so, little fear oh, in no you oh no question no question <laughs> so you came from a single parent home mm -hmm. um i did too and i recently shared with you that i learned mm -hmm. that you and i both our fathers were murdered mm -hmm. um when we were only 2 years old right. How did that affect you? I mean, I know it's different yeah. in different stages of our lives, yeah. but how about growing up as a young man with a single mother, yeah. not having your father there yeah. as a young man? You know, it's, it's, it, I was reflecting on this the other day. Um, I didn't learn how my father died until I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So all my life, I just knew that he was shot. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom told me he was shot. And so um, as a boy... You know, not having a father is like looking in the mirror and not seeing your reflection. And so that 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 pain stuck with me and it got that hole got got bigger and bigger and bigger. So, um, you know, it was difficult, you know, and then, you know, my mom, she had her own challenges as a result of the relationship that she and he had mm -hmm. uh, due to his you know occupation, his personality and, you know, some of the things that he had to deal with growing up. But I would say for me, it was it was definitely tough. Uh, because number one, I grew up in a single parent home. I was also an only child. Mm. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a sense of loneliness yeah. and not having somebody that you can, you know, go to and talk about man things, you know yeah. what I mean? So it was a challenge, but I, you know, I, I went through a lot of, um, you know, personal development through mentors That's and coaches good. and people that men that were able to pour into my life, mm -hmm. which allowed me not to go too far to the left or too far to the right. Because they came in, they were like my guardrails. Mm. You know, they were like my guardrails. So that 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 definitely helped for the external. But I had to continue to seek out other relationships to fix the internal. If that makes sense. Yeah. So what was the what was it that you felt need fixing? For when I hear fixing, yeah. I hear trauma. Yeah. Yeah. What, what yeah. was it you felt need uh, fixing? Number one, just understanding how to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How to shave. Mm -hmm. You know how to 
out of box. You know, mm -hmm. I still remember I went to see my mom for Father's Day this mm -hmm. year. And I just mm -hmm. felt the need, you know, after 18 months with everything going on with COVID, I was like, I need to go see my mom. Mm -hmm. And we just joked around. I said, I still remember when you taught me out of box. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom <laughs> did the best that she could. Yeah, of course. But it's like, it's just nothing like a man raising a boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, being able to take him uh, camping or fishing. Um, truth be told, Furious Styles was my father. Mm, you know, okay, what Boys movie in the Hood, is that? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so he would, when he took Trey fishing, I felt <laughs> uh, like he was taking me fishing. Aw, you know what I'm so, saying? When he was telling them about a black man shouldn't go to the military or you know, making sure you put on a rubber before you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was like, oh, okay, that's why. Okay, let me take those notes. Wow. Uh, but I think, you know, having that, that personal interaction mm -hmm. would have made it a little bit better. But, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we say that without that situation mm -hmm. but my father was a hard man yeah so if he were alive mm -hmm. what would that would what, what would i have become would That's i have true. become hard would i have become you know abusive you know, you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i look at it like even though i didn't have him in my life it it still helped me to grow to be the man that i am today if that makes sense yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so what advice would you give right because we have a lot of people who I mean, the single, I mean, I don't even know the statistics. We'll mm -hmm. probably put some on the screen, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of black boys mm -hmm. being raised by their mothers, yeah. you know, yeah. and shout out to all the single moms mm -hmm. because I'm, let me tell you, I, I've been married, like I said, for about 18 years and my husband <laughs> was gone for a month and I, I, I went through that single mother right experience yeah. and I was like wow mm -hmm. I can only just imagine yeah. the heartache and the loneliness and the pain that my mother went through even mm -hmm. though they did the best they could right. Right. but there's so many young boys right now mm -hmm. in the situation mm -hmm. what would you say to that teenage boy or yeah. that that 20 year old or that 25 year old male mm -hmm. to help him get through any trauma that or any anything that he feels he's missing yeah the first thing I say is it, it it's okay you know, um, that you have these feelings, mm -hmm. that it's, you're not alone, yeah. you know, um, because so many other men have dealt with that. So that's mm -hmm. the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing I would say is, you know, there are other men who will embrace you if yeah. you're willing to open up. That's good. But we got to be careful because we don't, we might not know who. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to trust our gut, even mm -hmm. though our gut might say, I'm not opening up to another man or another person. Yeah. Um, and it's not it's not anything more than just putting yourself in a position to release mm -hmm. the chains or, yeah. or just release the emotion. Uh, counseling is fine, too. Mm -hmm. You know, going to see a therapist is, is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. you know, I know in our community it's, it's been taboo, but it's, mm -hmm. it's going to the therapist for me. It's like going to the barbershop. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We go yeah. to the barbershop, get a haircut. Right. You know, I know some brothers don't want to go to the doctor when they feel a little pain, but that, uh -huh. you know, that, that emotional pain is like going to the barbershop. You yeah. just got to go, just go there, get taken care of. And, um, and that actually helped me because I still had some unsettling situations, even up to 2015 mm -hmm. when I was, when I was at a point where I wanted to take my own life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I felt like the world was spinning out of control. I so had been married. Was, yeah, what was going on at that time? Yeah, I was, you know, when I graduated from college, I went to Virginia University. So mm -hmm. I came to Richmond, Virginia from New York in 1996. Mm -hmm. When I graduated, I wanted to be a full-time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. right? I wanted mm -hmm. to just take that risk and better myself. Mm -hmm. But I chose to, you know, go to work. I had a mentor that was like, listen, you need to get a job. Mm -hmm. And I, I was disappointed, but I did that. Yeah. But I got to a point where I felt like an eagle in a Tweety Bird cage. Mm. I felt like the world was spinning out of control. I wasn't yeah. doing what God was calling me to do. Mm -hmm. And one night, I just left my house and I went to a sports bar. I was like, well, listen, I'll drink as much as I need to drink and whatever happens, happens. And mm -hmm. at that point, at that time, I hadn't had any alcohol for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it was severe mm -hmm. for me to get to that point. And so I remember going to a spot in Richmond. And I took a picture of the shot of Hennessy that I was about to drink. And on the bottom, it had the napkin to the hotel that it was at. And I sent it to a few of my support brothers. And I just said, pray for me. Mm -hmm. My phone dies. And then a few moments later, two of my homeboys come walking through the door. That's brother. Now, here's the crazy thing. It, they weren't the brothers that I text. Oh. The brothers that I text sent the text to other brothers in Richmond. And they came to see about me. 
I still drink the drink, but yeah. I, they talked to me long enough for me to make an intelligent decision. That's awesome. And that's from there. I went. I needed to go. You know, I said, I, all right, I'm going to go get some therapy and, and go take care of that. So that's why mm-hmm. I, I, I can confidently say there are other men out there who will have your back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so it's okay to seek those people out. That's amazing. Do you feel like there's some trauma or some chains that you haven't dealt with? It doesn't even have to be around not having a father, but just in general. It's funny. So you're catching me at a great time in my life where many of those chains have I've actually been released. You know, awesome. I was I was at a conference this weekend, and I was learning how to become a whole CEO. Mm-hmm. Right. So understanding the, the psychological um, development, even down to just planning my my time. Mm-hmm. You know. So I think that I think the mm-hmm. trauma that or, or the or the, you know, the trauma that I'm releasing now is that I can be organized, mm-hmm. right? That yeah. I can plan my life even though I'm very spontaneous mm-hmm. because if I don't plan, it'll produce more trauma mm-hmm. because of either missed opportunities yep. or just not being as productive. Yeah. So, you know, so I would say that, you know, just rec- recognizing that I have to plan my life so that I can get the most out of my life versus mm-hmm. just jumping from the seat of my pants and going after stuff that I know I probably shouldn't be doing because I want to do it. Right. I need to do it because I have to do it. Uh, so then I can have my time to do what I want to do. And that it makes sense. Oh, no doubt. One thing I no talk doubt. a lot about is vision. Yeah. You know, so like you say, if we're if we don't have a vision, it's easy for other things to come because opportunities come all the time. All the time. All the time. But yeah. that doesn't mean it's the right opportunity. That's right. If That's it doesn't right. match the vision you have for your business, mm-hmm. for your family, for mm-hmm. your girls, mm-hmm. then we gotta be mindful yeah. Yeah. And that comes with proper strategy mm-hmm. and proper planning, mm-hmm. which I think is the reason why you do what you do in the space of helping women entrepreneurs mm-hmm. with their getting their stuff together mm-hmm. yep. and LinkedIn yep. so that their profiles are attracting the right business That's to them. Exactly right. So I did some research, right? Because yeah. I'm yeah. nosy. Yeah, no question. Anybody come to my house, no come question. to anything, they yeah. come in and part yeah. of the release chains movement, yeah. I'm being nosy, yeah. right? Yeah. So I realized that you read a lot of books. And mm-hmm. one book that I noticed that you read is one mm-hmm. of my absolute favorite books, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. Now that's an old book. Yeah, Many classic. of us have heard the book. Yeah, I read classic. the book. I was like a teenager, yeah. literally, probably 13, 14. Mm-hmm. But the title mm-hmm. attracted me. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it's the same mm-hmm. thing with you. That's you don't right. have a father. That's you like right. rich dad, poor that's dad. Right. Hold on. What that's is this right. all about? That's right. So, but the book mm-hmm. literally changed my life because it had me thinking about my 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 financial yeah, future yeah, different yeah. but the book was filled with so many other gems yeah, no that i feel like a lot of people don't catch yeah. right so every time robert kawasaki talks every time i can i can listen to him i'm listening because i get life yeah, stuff that yeah. helps to release some change yeah. i get the financial the wealth the money and everything so i pull some quotes from yeah, the book yeah. and i want to read them and i want you to um you need me to repeat them Feel free. Yeah, for sure. I want you to tell me which one sits with you the most. Like okay. what one's like, oh, that that's that was for me, right? right. right. So one in the book is we have ha- we all have tremendous potential, and we w- and we are all blessed with gifts. Mm-hmm. Yet the one thing that holds all of us back is some degree of self doubt. Mm-hmm. It is not so much the lack of technical information that holds us back, but more of the lack of self confidence. Mm-hmm. That's good, yeah, right? That's powerful, yeah. And here's another one. Today, wealth is in information. And the person who has the most timely information owns the wealth. Come on. That's powerful, That's right? truly powerful. And here's another one. He said, we only memorize historical dates and names, mm-hmm. not the lesson. Mm. Mm, that's good, right? Yeah. And then the last one is balanced people go nowhere. They stay in one spot. Come on. You want to look at them? Come on. I like that. You want to look at I them? I like that. <laughs> I like that. Which one do you feel kind of set the tone for your life? Or help you release some sort of chain. Yeah, I would say the one about um, about the lack of self confidence. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. something that I've been dealing with, you know, for for a while. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why you have to make sure you find people that have that, so that when mm-hmm. you feel a depletion, mm-hmm. you can get around and get. You know, filled because mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, we are we are a spiritual being yes. in a physical body, absolutely. Right? And yep. so, we we have to tap into the energy source so that our energy source can be increased. And so absolutely. that's where confidence is. But yeah. but the reality is because you know, I, I this is how I help my clients. I let my clients know 
that confidence comes from knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. once you have that information, like yeah. Kiyosaki said, once you have that information, then you can you can say, okay, this is what I know to be true. Mm -hmm. And then you have to apply that information mm -hmm. so you can get a result. Because once you get that result, then you're like, oh, it's mm -hmm. like it's like kids. You know, kids don't come out of the womb running. Right. You know, they, mm -hmm. they fall. Yep. They get up. They mm -hmm. fall again. But they have somebody that's there who can say, "All right, you can do it." Yeah, you know. And so that, so that person, their parent, their 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 uh, godparent, whomever, is filling them up. And so we have mm -hmm. to have that. Yeah. But I, I'll give you, I'll give you one that I love from Kiyosaki that has stuck to me to this day since I read that book, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's it's pay your advisors well. Mm -hmm. So that's so good. so 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 when you think about people, oh, I want to pay my advice. Right, for, I know, I know what you first mean. First of all, you got it. That means you have to have someone who has a greater level of expertise yeah. than you. Yeah. Then you have to be willing to invest in them, and that's why yeah. you know I, I laugh when when I meet people who are coaches and they say I don't have a coach. I'm like, you won't mm. be a coach very long. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so yeah. so, but but from from the emotional perspective. You know, because it doesn't have to be just business. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? An it's advisor can be, that. right, an yeah. advisor can be that therapist that yeah. you invest. And that mentor. That mentor. Yeah. That's right. That Even person. It can that, be your spouse or your friend Oh, no question. Too. No yeah. question. So so yeah. I love that, you know. and mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this. Rich Dad, Poor Dad was powerful. But the subtitle to me is what is more powerful. Mm -hmm. It talks mm -hmm. about what wealthy parents teach their children that the poor and middle class do not. Do not, yeah. And when I read that, I realized yeah. this book is for me. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the South Bronx. Right. My mom, I was, you know, brought up in a single parent home. My father was murdered when I was two. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this book, you wrote this book for me. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because my yeah. mom, my mom worked overtime, double time, triple time for the telephone company. She was always mm -hmm. tired. Every time I asked her for money, she said, you better go take these beer cans mm -hmm. to the store. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, she taught you entrepreneurship oh, at a young no age. Oh, no question. Like she was like, she's like, you better go out here. <laughs> and, you know, she's like, I ain't got no money, but I'll be sitting back right. thinking. I'm like, hold up. But you smoking all the cigarettes. <laughs> right. You right. drinking enough beer for me to go get this money. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I uh, I think I think I was born to be a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. When my mom would give me $20, mm -hmm. I literally would hook up the hood. Mm, you know, Ice awesome. Man come. That's awesome. We got in New York. We got Mister Softy. Mister mm -hmm. Softy come down the street. <laughs> I'm breaking people off. Like yo, y'all right. want some? Uh, but what I had to learn was real quick. Yeah. My husband, his parents, his dad used to own a Mister Softy. Are you truck. serious? Yeah, huh? Low key. I always wanted to own a Mister Softy. Yeah, but, yeah. And especially now, because but obviously I wouldn't drive it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because listen, they it's can good go business. anywhere. Yeah, and they go really anywhere. See ice cream trucks no. now. I mean, I don't know. No. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't they, see. It. So it's funny in Virginia they had a knockoff Mister Softy. I was mm. like, man, the, the music that it don't even sound it's the same. No, I don't <laughs> so when I see a Mr. Softy driving down the street, I go crazy. My kids are like, why are you going crazy? I said, listen, my childhood just rolled right in front right, of me. Right, right. So yeah, I, I think I... I was definitely born to be a philanthropist because I just awesome, love though. taking care of people. That's so, so dope. Yeah. That's so dope. Mm -hmm. So, like, when it comes to entrepreneurship, right? And so we, are, I think, I think now we're in tw currently in 2021, mm -hmm. and we just came through a pretty horrific yeah. pandemic. We're yeah. still in. The, yeah, we're still, still in it still in right it. now. We're still. We're, we're we're still in it. We will be in it for a long time. Right. But I think that it opened up mm -hmm. so many eyes yeah. to mm -hmm. freedom. Yeah. You know, yeah. because a lot of people were laid off mm -hmm. or they couldn't go to work That's or right. they were working from home right. doing virtual learning. Mm -hmm. And they realized, hold on, mm -hmm. I can now put a little bit more attention mm -hmm. towards what I'm really passionate That's about, right. what mm -hmm. my purpose is, mm -hmm. and towards my children. Because right. right. there's nothing like having, not being tired, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, to go and play with your, your kids or take them places or whatever the case may be. Yeah. So a lot of people kind of got into the space of freedom. And I yeah. really believe that that's what releasing the chains is oh, no question. is freedom mm -hmm. because for me i got into entrepreneurship not for the money right it was to be free That's to exactly. free myself yep. from a time clock yep. and to, and to be there to be able to take my son to mm -hmm. school pick him up and mm -hmm. be just be there for yeah. him right yeah. so with all of that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. what has been your you know if you think about like mm -hmm. just your greatest experience in mm -hmm. looking at this pandemic and you being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. even though it's been very horrific and it still is yeah. we've lost a lot of people yeah. it's been pretty horrific especially for 
small businesses. I can go on and on about so many companies that are now shut down. Right, right, it has right. done. A, it's been really bad to our economy. Mm -hmm. But what has been your greatest lesson from all well, of this? Well, first of all, my wife, uh, when, when we got together, she taught me this quote that I say everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who are flexible for they never get bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. So when I when that, that, that sticks with me, even now, it's like, okay, the pandemic has created some stressful situations, but right. blessed are those who are flexible. Right. Meaning, Okay, you got to be flexible. Mm -hmm. In this pandemic, I was actually working for a college, the trade school in Richmond. And uh, in December of 2020, they were like, listen, you know, we, we, we're cutting your position across the country. I was doing community outreach. So obviously, if you can't go in schools and you can't go into the community, they, the company feels like, well, we no longer need that role. Mm. When it was so much more that could be done even in that. So mm -hmm. they gave me an ultimatum. They said, listen, you either take on this admissions role or today's your last day, mm. right? So I was like, nah, y'all got the drop on me, so I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna just quit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's fine. I gave myself 90 days. Mm. And in 90 days, I was ready to make my move. And mm. so March 9th of this year, I transitioned back to full-time entrepreneurship. Okay, so how do you feel? And I, so that was that, that was a, that was, that was, I would say that one event mm -hmm. is what produced so many other mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. But had mm -hmm. I not, had the boldness to be able to say, you know what, I can do this. Like yeah. I'm betting on myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can do that. I mean, even coming down here, it's like, you know, if I was working at the college, there'd be no way that I'm coming down on a Thursday and then mm -hmm. coming back on a Monday. You know what I'm right. saying? It's not possible. So that right. personal freedom is important yes. so yeah. that I could operate in my gift, yeah. knowing that my gift is gonna make room for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And any every time I every time I operate in that in that fashion, mm -hmm. that's a that's like the highest level of belief, mm -hmm. which is faith. Yeah. And that's what pleases God, right? So mm -hmm. it's like now he's gonna bless me because I'm operating in the faith that he's given me. Absolutely. And the opportunity open wide up mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so and it's easy to say that right mm -hmm. because the work that i do i work with so many entrepreneurs just like you yeah. and I, I give them strategy to you know market themselves yeah. and be the best in their business and make money and and and, and produce results mm -hmm. but a lot of times they don't do anything yeah. with it yeah. it's like they're stuck on the action that's of right. it that's right and i know mm -hmm. that it stems from fear yeah, it is. which is the biggest chain it that is. we all we all have mm -hmm. so i have seven steps to release the chain mm -hmm. right one mm -hmm. of there let me let me i want to read them to you and yeah. i want to ask you mm -hmm. for you in entrepreneurship, when mm -hmm. we talk about believing yeah. in ourselves yeah. and going forward mm -hmm. with the fear, which one kind of sticks out to you? Or what do you think most people can um, gain value from? Um, listening. Mm -hmm. I believe we got to listen to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to give you my definition. I'm okay. just going to read them yeah. to you and yeah. then you just kind of yeah, share what comes to share. you. Yep, so listening, mm -hmm. um, peeling, detaching, mm -hmm. forgiving, mm. trusting, healing, and then evolving. Mm. Hmm. What was the biggest thing for you recently? Or what do you think people need to really kind of tap into for them to release their chains? With I think for me is evolving mm -hmm. uh, because the person that I was when I first started this journey of entrepreneurship, I'm definitely not that same person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say for somebody getting yeah. started, I, I like that. I like that listening is the first thing mm -hmm. because even like my grandmother, my grandmother would always say, trust your gut. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to listen to the the power that's on the inside. So first yes, of all, if it, you know, for that. those that are just getting started, I would say you have a power on the inside of you yeah. that you haven't discovered yet. Mm -hmm. We're telling you as people that have already tapped into that power yeah. that it's there. it's there. You just have to be willing to trust that we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, it's like It's like when my kids, they wanted to swim and I'm in the pool and I'm like, come on, jump in the water. Mm -hmm. And they're like, but daddy, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm going to catch you. Mm -hmm. And you've got to go through this back and forth several minutes or whatever. And then all of a sudden, they're like, okay, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And they jump in. And they get in the water. And daddy catches them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. it wasn't so bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. So for those that are, that, are, that are watching and listening, it's important that they trust the people who have done what you're striving to do. Right. That's and good. once you do that, then you'll you'll be able to know the next step because the next step has already been laid out. It's mm -hmm. not like it's not like for some of us who had to figure it out on our own. Right. Right. We had to kind of, you know, learn it as we go. Mm -hmm. We get the benefit of 
learning from people who give you mm, a seven step steps. seven step system right. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and i and i think that the reason why most people have fear is because they haven't seen it mm-hmm. so because they haven't seen it they don't know it's real right. so the, the reality is that they have to be then exposed mm-hmm. and say listen this is what you can have if mm-hmm. you do this if you do that now you can't you know how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So mm-hmm. we're not going to devour this whole elephant. Right. But just focus on this one step. Little piece. Master little that bite. one step. Master yep. that one step. <laughs> if you can master that one step, mm-hmm. then it's going to lead to momentum because yeah. then you got the second step. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love it. So, I love yeah. it. And I'm really big on that unknown. Mm-hmm. Fear is the unknown. Like yeah. If we don't know, yeah. we don't know what it is, what it looks like, it's scary. Mm-hmm. But I like to uh, encourage people to like, be excited about what's not yeah, unknown because yeah. what's not unknown is not always bad. It's not always bad. It's like I didn't when yeah. I got married. I didn't know it was gonna be yeah. you know amazing. Yeah. I didn't know having a child and mm-hmm. being a parent mm-hmm. will be this amazing. Yeah, and it's all about outlook too. You know, yeah. you got to you got to be mindful of what your mind. Well, really, what what comes out of your mouth? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the book I read says that you're snared by the words of your mouth. That mm-hmm. you know, pop, life and death is in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we got to be careful. Yeah. Because, uh, and I was explaining this to a group of people the other day, that when you speak, it's like typing on a keyboard. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a little kid. You put a little kid on the keyboard. They hit J K J K J K. They just keep plucking, and you, right. you don't say. You don't. You know, you look at the screen and then say anything. Right. But once they get sweet with the typing. Now they type in sentences, they type in paragraphs, and that's how we are when we speak. We are able to create messages that allow us to move forward towards where we're looking to go. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that. No more chains holding me. Hey, have you started a business this year? Are you looking to expand your business? I know an organization that can help you call Closer to Our Dreams. Coach D and his team of attorneys, financial advisors, business coaches, consultants. I mean, they have everything that you need over there. They're a motivational company and they're focused on helping 1,000 people this year start or grow the business that they already have. And they're doing this by hosting in-person events. So they have a lot of training. They also have courses that you can go in and purchase online and they have a membership program for entrepreneurs that need and want that ongoing support. Now, I don't know about you, but as an entrepreneur for over 20 years, I know for me it's always important to have that ongoing support because you're always going to be up leveling in your business but their goal is really helping those startup organizations start up the right way so go to closer to our dreams.com register for some classes buy some stuff and while you're there make sure you pick up one of these fly sweatshirts all right i wish you all the success no more chains holding me so I'm into teaching folks stuff, right? Yeah. Because I feel like we could talk all day. We can share our experiences. We can share what we've done. We can motivate people mm-hmm. and inspire people. I don't just want to be an inspiration. Yeah, so many people, oh, Reed, you inspire me. I'm so inspired. I don't want to inspire yeah, you. Yeah. I, if anything, I want to inspire you to take action, action. Right. because we can be empowered all day. Yeah. Like That's why I don't go to empowerment events. I don't yeah. need to be empowered. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't need, need, don't need to hide. That's just me. That's right. That's right. I want steps. Right. I want processes. Right. I want strategies. Right. I want to plan, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What can you give somebody listening yeah. a solution for something that's going on in their life? Right. And yeah. I want to hear about a solution mm-hmm. that you can give them in what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So, the, well, so one of my one of my favorite books is The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz, mm. and it talks about a disease that everybody has that's literally killing them and preventing them from being successful. But mm. the beautiful thing about the book is that it gives the cure. So I'm not going to give it away, so I'm going to encourage people to read it. Okay. But I will give something that actually cures fear, and that's action. Mm-hmm. So action cures Wait a minute. Hold on. Say fear. that again, so please, because action, that's important. Yeah. So so we know fear exists. Yeah. Even though and people say okay. even though people say fear is false evidence appearing real, I understand what people are saying when they right. say that nah, because they fear don't want is a people. Real thing. Yeah, but it is because it prevents people from moving, even right. though. Even though fear could be a mouse on a microphone, mm-hmm. right? We walk in a dark room, we hear somebody say, get out, or hear something say, get out. We flip on the light, it's a mouse in the corner on a microphone. We're like, why am I scared of a mouse on a microphone? Mm-hmm. 
that might be a silly analogy, but the reality is that's that's oftentimes what it is. Right. Yeah. But how do you overcome that by taking action? Mm-hmm. Uh, in my case, in, in terms of my business, I love to teach people how to communicate the value that they bring to the marketplace. Mm-hmm. So I have this concept called the six second elevator pitch. Mm-hmm. Most people will do 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 60 seconds. Mm-hmm. But what I find is that people go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. They don't get to the point of telling people exactly what you do. You've been talking. So what I did was I taught, uh, I teach people this equation where if you give somebody your verb, Right, you give them your target and then you give them the result that you get for that target and you do it in six seconds. A person is going to then say, huh, how do you do that? Mm-hmm. And then it prompts them to have a conversation with you. And it allows you to draw people to you versus chasing after people, which most mm-hmm. people tend to do. Yeah. They tend to chase after people. So yeah. that's what I do on a consistent basis. And I think what happens is once people get that, mm-hmm. the light bulb comes up. Mm-hmm. They get more, a little more confidence. Yeah. And now they stumble when they say it. So I say, listen, just just write it down or or say it into your phone or record it and listen mm-hmm. to it over and over so you can mm-hmm. so you can know that that's what you do mm-hmm. because we do so much. There's so much we do, yeah. but, but you can't give everybody everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Confused people don't buy. Mm-hmm. So if you confuse somebody up, up front, even though they may not buy from you, they won't be able to introduce you to the people who you can help Absolutely. because they don't understand what you do. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, okay, that's great. And walk away. And if I can interject and, yeah. and kind of piggyback off of that, mm-hmm. it's a whole thing with controlling your brand. Yes. Controlling your message yes. and your marketplace. All the time. You have to be able to tell people exactly what you do mm-hmm. because they're going to go and tell somebody else That's what exactly you do. Right. You don't want them saying, well, they do this and they yeah. do that. And I think they do or this Or make too. up something that's right. totally different exactly. and then you got to correct them. It's like, that's not and what you I have do. to decide what that yeah. is. You don't yeah. say, th- I, this, this thing bothers me a lot where you go out and they say survey your people survey people right 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 that's not always the answer right. because you have to set the tone yeah. of what your brand is yeah, that's because true. that's what you want to be in the marketplace yeah, yeah. and you can't just ask you can't you because you're gonna get fifty thousand answers I, I would answers. say i would say if you do survey people <laughs> survey the people you've already, you've already served worked with yep exactly. because now what happens is and, and, that's what, and that's what that's what that's and that's what's important mm-hmm. like even today i was talking to a young lady she was going on and on i said okay give, i said give me this this give me this answer give me the name of the of a person you work with within the last 60 days mm-hmm. so she gave me the name mm-hmm. I said, what does this woman do? She's a therapist. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Tell me more about her. She's a wife and a mom. Mm-hmm. So on the spot, I gave her a six-second elevator pitch, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and she was like, "Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. like that's so simple." Mm-hmm. So that epiphany, that 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 aha moment, mm-hmm. is what I love to help yeah. my clients to get because yeah. it's a small step. Yeah. I, if I if I had to add another book to the list, Ari. Well, hold on before oh, you okay, go there. Okay, because I'm about to. Yeah, yeah hold yeah. it. You want to write it in this no, pen no, no, and paper? It's, okay, it's okay. right here. It's right so, here. So hold on, because right I'm about to. I, I'm like, that's what I need. I need a pen and paper because I my mind be going so Man, many I things. So I you gave her that right. Yeah, she yeah, had yeah. an epiphany yeah, right, yeah, yeah. and I wanted you to give us another example of that. Yeah. I'm gonna like play. You know, yeah, like yeah. I'm somebody. You know. Um. But what chain mm-hmm. does or did she have to release yeah. in order to take that in because a yeah. lot of people they're stuck yeah. in their stuff and that's okay yeah. but having mentors and coaches yeah. and consultants that can help you through things yeah. is so important but what chain did she need to release in yeah. order to be receiving of that yeah. blessing she, you gave she, her? She, so i learned that day that she was an overthinker mm. So that was something mm, that she good. that was something that's that she good. had to release in order to receive the information. That's and so, so because good. I because I coach overthinkers, mm-hmm. the way that I was able to zero in by mm-hmm. at, so so we have to be willing to ask the right questions. Yes. Because if you don't ask the right questions, you won't get the right answer. Mm-hmm. And then we would have been circling around and around and around. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. so and so by asking her, okay, listen, within the last sixty days. Give me the name of somebody. So now what I'm doing is I'm giving her clarity. That's really mm-hmm. that's really the value that I bring is that right. clarity. Clarity, yeah. Because once mm-hmm. you have clarity, that's when you can get confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know what you know. Mm-hmm. Now you have to go out and put it put into action. Because mm-hmm. then you'll get another level of confidence because you're like, okay, 
I did that, I got an experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's why having a coach is so important because you yeah. go back and you say, hey, I got this experience. And for some people, a pat on the back is enough for them to go to the moon. There you go. For other people, yeah. it's like, I don't need all that. Yeah. Just tell me what other result I can get. Right. Yeah. And I'll keep on going. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. what book were you going to mention? Oh, Slight Edge. Oh, okay. I haven't yeah, read that Slight one. Slight Edge. Uh, it's by author? Jeff Olson. Okay. Not to be confused with Joel Olstein, Olstein, right? right. <laughs> yeah. And that book is powerful because it talks about, and this is in line with what we're talking about, it talks about. When you do the little things Mm -hmm. over time, Mm -hmm. it equals the big thing. Okay. Okay. Most people think if I just do this one thing, it's Mm -hmm. like a lotto mentality. Mm -hmm. If I do this one thing, I'm going to hit it big. But what they don't realize is the people who do the things over and over and over over a period of time, Mm -hmm. they won't have to keep doing it because they'll have momentum. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mm -hmm. if you start and stop, start and stop, you'll be doing it way longer because you won't have the benefit of of the slight edge mm-hmm. on your side. Mm-hmm. So that that was another book that I wanted that's to That's good. To I got to check out that yeah, book. That's um book. and that's 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 entrepreneurs period, right? Oh, yeah, no because question. entrepreneurs we tend to have this this mentality of we we have a lot of ideas mm-hmm. because we're creative thinkers. Mm-hmm. You have to be mm-hmm. a creative thinker mm-hmm. to be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's just it just comes with the territory. Yeah. But we'll want to do so many so many so many so many so many things, mm-hmm. but it's hard to get that slight edge if you're trying to do Everything, everything and not being focused That's right. on Get that one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah master master that one thing. Yeah. But I'm not against either yeah. doing multiple mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. either because mm-hmm. a lot of us have multiple passions mm-hmm. and multiple gifts yeah. um, and multiple audiences that we can serve, which is what brings me to mm-hmm. this podcast yeah. and you know clearing out that mental stuff, mm-hmm. that generational stuff mm-hmm. um, in business. Mm-hmm. Right when we think about the black culture mm-hmm. and we think about generationally, we've all heard about Wall Street. If you mm-hmm. haven't, make sure you go yeah. and do some raw, doing some research on Wall Street. But mm-hmm. we've heard about Wall Street and how amazing that was mm-hmm. in the 1920s yeah. and how our people were working with each other and collaborating mm-hmm. and partnering like mm-hmm. we're doing now. Yeah. And I'm so happy to mm-hmm. be seeing more of that happening. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think we need to do better? And mm-hmm. let's be real. Yeah, 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 for sure. Let's not for sugarcoat sure. this. Yeah, for sure. Us as a black community when it yeah. comes to business, yeah. in your opinion, yeah. and being real and raw, mm-hmm. what do you think? Yeah, just uh, just not having that fear somebody's going to come up over you. Mm. Oh, right? That's so, so good. So, so, so... And if they do, what we have to realize is that what's for them is for them, yeah. what's for you is for you. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, so if somebody yep. get to come up because you blessed them with an yep. idea, yep. that idea probably wasn't for you. Right. I, I'm a firm yep. believer, and this is what I felt like God has given me, a bunch of ideas. That's why I love being a consultant as well, mm-hmm. because a consultant's job is to give people ideas, and as long as they execute, they'll likely make money off yeah. it. If they don't, they mm-hmm. won't. And then the idea is just out there, right? Mm-hmm. So I think just this, this, this feeling, especially among brothers and sisters, like yo, I don't want to give them this. I don't want to give them this game because if I get in this game, then they are gonna probably blow up. Well, well, you should be excited, exactly. Because if you give them the game and they blow up, you should be excited because exactly. you helped them to blow up. Yeah. But the reality is that it wasn't the game you gave away. Mm-hmm. They still had to put in the work. Exactly. So don't exactly. be afraid to give away people. Don't give away. Mm-hmm. The, don't uh, be mm-hmm. afraid to give away the information. I love that because it, if here's a here's a reality, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just how fast can you? Just like Kiyosaki said, how fast can you get to the information? Yeah. And how fast can you then convert that information into something that can produce mm-hmm. something for you, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. it's no, it's a matter of time before a person gets the information. Now yeah. we just pray that their their time doesn't run out. Mm-hmm. That's why we have to get around other people and listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I would think the yeah. first thing is not not being afraid to give away the game. That's good. But then number two. Stop talking so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you mean by that? Because people they 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 talk like they know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not willing to sit and listen. Yeah, Ooh, like you said, good. your first your first part on the list. First is step listen. of releasing the change is sit. listening. You we, gotta listen. We, we, we were we were we. The reason why we became successful as a people was because we had the griots. They yeah. was telling the story. They was passing the story along. Right. Yeah. They weren't writing nothing down. Mm-hmm. You sit at the feet of grandma. Grandma tell you the story while you while she doing your hair. And you take that story and you pass it on. Somewhere we got lost and we yeah. stopped passing on the story. Yeah. No, or people stop back, stop listening. You know? I think it goes back to exactly what you said of being afraid of someone building yeah. higher than you yeah. and being better. Yeah. And I this one thing I say is people want to see you do good mm-hmm. until you start doing better than mm-hmm. them. And mm-hmm. that's sad, yeah. us as people. It's mm-hmm. it's sad. Mm-hmm. But that is a chain. 
that we definitely need yeah. to embrace. Yeah. Right, yeah. we gotta yeah. embrace that first. Yeah, we gotta do because that. that's trauma. Yeah, I think it's trauma, it and that's something we gotta embrace. We gotta heal from, yeah. and we gotta release collectively. Yeah. But I think that the solution for that, mm-hmm. we just need we need to see more of this. Yeah, we do more, more of collab- us more collaborate. Collaboration. And like you yeah. refer people to me, yeah. I'll refer people to yeah. you. We yeah. do business together. Yeah. We put money in each other's pockets. Yeah. Yeah. And I, if you look, I have a client that did two million in twenty twenty. I'm like, yes, Come on. That's hallelujah. Right. That's right. Absolutely. You know what I'm based Absolutely. on what I gave the yeah. game I gave. Yeah. Of course, she invested that's in the right. game. That's right. That's but right. that's what that's you right. get when you, you invest get when in you yourself. Invest in game. Right? That's right. Absolutely. But Absolutely. because of that, she's not even my client no right. more. I'm right. con- I'm like, won't you do that? Right. I'm constantly right. dropping more that's game right. so right. she can do four million mm-hmm. this year and then eight mm-hmm. million the next yeah. you get what i'm saying yeah, no question. so no i question. really think that that was really really mm-hmm. good we mm-hmm. really got to embrace this whole thing of it's okay mm-hmm. if your sister mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. me i want mm-hmm. my sister and brother mm-hmm. to do way better yeah, than me I do. I, I, i'm an inspiration yeah. but i want you to climb a lot higher but i like to point so here's the thing the, and the reason why that that stood out is because i like to then point to people who are successful mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. And, if, and if that person is if that person understands the power of edification, mm-hmm. when I bring this new person over, they're mm-hmm. not going to say, I got here by myself. Absolutely. They're going to say, let me tell you what YB told me. Right. Let me tell you what Ari told me. Mm-hmm. And now what that does is gives more credibility to the person that's checking you out. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? To yep. see if you're the real deal. Yep. Because we don't... So I tell people this. Credibility is not what you say about yourself. It's what other people say about you. Absolutely. So you, the, in order for you to be seen as the real deal, don't brag on your stuff. Just keep working. Mm-hmm. Eventually, what's going to happen is the people you've helped, they're going to get that message to the other folks. Mm-hmm. And those other folks are going to say, okay, yeah, I need to. I think I need to work with them. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah. love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. So what inspired you when you think about Black Wall Street and reading about Black oh, Wall man. Street? You know, forget the tragedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I like to look at the journey that yeah. we took as a people yeah. and, and to see it coming back if you yeah. look at the news oh, yeah. and you're paying oh, yeah. attention oh, yeah. like if you're really oh, yeah. paying attention oh, yeah. and you're on social media and you're reading mm-hmm. um the black media yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got to read the black media yeah. okay yeah. um you'll see that there's a lot of that wall street mentality yeah, what yeah, inspired yeah. you about that movement I, i'll tell you this I, I i had the pleasure of going through a program called inroads mm-hmm. when i was in uh college mm-hmm. and inroads was founded by a white gentleman named mm-hmm. frank carr mm-hmm. who had a powerful experience at the march on washington mm-hmm. he heard dr king speak he felt so compelled to go back to Chicago where he was from. And, mm-hmm. and he was a corporate executive, he was a high level corporate executive. He quit his job and he took about uh, 20 black and brown students from the hood mm-hmm. and got them connected to corporations, to internships. Okay, That was in 1970. And so, so when I see Black Wall Street or what I learned about Black Wall Street, it reminded me of what Frank Carr did for inroads. And most of these people said, that's 1970. Most of the people that started then, they became C-suite executives. Oh, that's you feel funny. what I'm saying? I love um, that. And so, 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 what I love to 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 tell students, even if they're shooting for the corporate life, is find a way to own your own business. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so that was an example. Mm-hmm. I mean, even in Richmond, Richmond had Richmond, Virginia had an example of Black Wall Street. Mm. It was it's called Jackson Wood. You're absolutely yeah, right. It's called Jackson Wood. You're absolutely right. So every and several, every, and several that's did. right. Yeah. Several cities. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, there's you know, there's design ways to kind yeah. of to destroy that. Yeah. The but government. I think what what we do is when you <laughs> learn from history, because history has a, ten, a tendency of repeating itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just have to find the clues. Success leaves clues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you find those those clues, you put them together and it's mm-hmm. going to create a message and you just follow the path and it'll lead you to where you need to go. Mm-hmm. I love that. I know mm-hmm. one thing about Black Wall Street that is that we weren't afraid. Mm-hmm. We weren't afraid. Mm-hmm. We were we mm-hmm. were like, that's one thing that inspired me about Black Wall Street and that we were proud about it. Yeah. Like we were like pro-black. We was doing it. We, we was doing like, it big. You know, like this is what it is, yeah. and this is what it's gonna be, and that's, that's right. okay. That's there was okay. no, there was no, you know, no negativity no. around it. It was just no. so, 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 so positive. No more chains holding me. She's a CEO is the ultimate family card game, and also an educational business toolkit for seasoned and aspiring entrepreneurs. It's fun. It's challenging. It's educational. 
get some knowledge, and pay some homage. There are a few ways to play for the most enjoyment and benefit. Play your favorite card games, spades, gin, poker, bid whist, or whatever your family loves to play. Are you ready to be mentally challenged in a fun way? Play our signature BizWiz business development matchup card game. The objective is to collect the most customers correctly based on matched business development statements we've created for you. Each week, research one of the noted entrepreneurs we've celebrated in the deck by pulling one or two random cards from the deck. Use the cards for daily, weekly, or occasional inspiration. Read their stories and learn more about the chains they've had to release to create long-term success and a legacy that will last forever. She's a CEO, a SHEEO. Visit she's a SheEO.biz to order your official business educational card deck today. No more chains holding me. What? So, any any questions you have for me? You know, I I want to know. What's your vision mm. for the future? I mean, I've been I've been following you for quite mm. some time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when you was killing the game in Northern Virginia, mm -hmm. you know, making it happen. Mm -hmm. Where do you see yourself in the mm. next five to ten years? Well, what's the what's the vision for what you're striving to? That's accomplish? a good question. So for me, I'm working on so many different things as you yeah. say, with us as visionary. Yeah. But I'm really looking in working and diving into the space of creating our own media Good. and telling our own stories. Mm -hmm. um, so filmmaking is, mm -hmm. is who is like storytelling and producing mm -hmm. and um, creating media outlets where we can have discussions, mm -hmm. solution-based discussions, mm -hmm. hear stories and be moved mm -hmm. and evolve mm -hmm. that seven step to release change, yeah. evolve and become higher versions of ourselves mm -hmm. Through work, yeah. through releasing chains, through dealing with our trauma. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be diving more into mm -hmm. the producing space, filmmaking. Mm -hmm. That's on the, that's on the purpose and passion yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the business side, for me, I'm, I'm always going to be a business coach. Mm -hmm. I'm always going to be helping people in brand management because I love it so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. To be able to sit here and say that my client mm -hmm. made. Two million, million last year. Mm -hmm. That's like a ma a black business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two million. That's amazing yeah, to yeah. be a part of yeah, that journey. Mm -hmm. You know, to be that vessel of change. Mm -hmm. So I want to be. I want to. My my tagline is empowering mind, changing lives. Mm -hmm. So whatever that looks like for yeah, me as yeah. it evolves, that's what I'm going to be doing yeah, forever. I like I I, when you find that thing that you love, that's a part of who you are. Yeah. Then you stick with it. I love you it. know, you I just keep it. doing it because you're just going to continue to be blessed. So that's a good question. I love it. Thank no, you. I, I appreciate it. that. No, I, I appreciate think, that. The reason why I say that is I even ask that question is because I believe I'm a firm believer in collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, uh, you know, I, I don't know if a little birdie might have told you, but I'm actually working on a book called Collaboration Creates Currency. Oh, cool. And what is it called again? Collaboration Creates Currency. Okay, that's and so true. It's, it's going to be a co-authored book, and so what I what I realize is that that's how we close the wealth gap. Mm -hmm. And you and you already touched on it because we've already seen it through Black Wall Street. So yeah. when I hear other people's vision, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, how can I be a part of that? Not in a sense of, hey, put me on, mm -hmm. but what can I do mm -hmm. to assist that person right. with getting closer to their to their vision of what they're striving to do? So I appreciate you and answering I, that question. And I that love question. that because that's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. When they're like, people want me to be their mentor, right. they want me to mentor them. Right. And what we un have to understand is that the mentor chooses the mentee. That's exactly right. And so a good way for you to, if you want to collaborate, mm -hmm. like let's say there's somebody, like yeah. there's somebody that you feel like a great collaboration could happen. Mm -hmm. It could just impact the world mm -hmm. tremendously, right? Well, you don't want to go ask them right. <laughs> for something. Right. Right. You want to bring them money, mm -hmm. opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, a connection. Yeah love yeah, yeah. you know you gotta br you have to be in the giving spirit mm -hmm. not in the receiving mm -hmm. and if it's done 
from your heart mm -hmm. and it's done properly because mm -hmm. sometimes collaborations are strategic yes, well, I've been very strategic yes. people are like how are you able how is Stedman Graham your mentor yeah, how are you yeah. been able to connect with Kevin Harrington yeah. and all of these different people that people can't even get access that's right, to that's right. well some of it is strategic that's right. but then it's from a place of purpose that's too right, that's right. because usually when we want to collaborate with mm -hmm. people we usually want to collaborate with people who have the same mission yeah, as yeah, us yeah, yeah. and I don't yeah. like the word like minds yeah you mean either yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me neither but what kind of mind you talking about what kind of mind you talking about this type of oh get in the room of no, like no, minds no, no, and everybody no. in there struggling i don't want to be in that room no, no, that's not, uh -uh. No, that's, not the kind of mind I'm, that's not the kind of mind i'm looking for yeah that's so right. you want to collaborate with people who yeah. are on the same mission yeah, as yeah, you absolutely. which is for me to empower minds mm -hmm. and change lives I like that. and everybody in this in, that you will see in mm -hmm. this podcast or here in this podcast is mm -hmm. on that same mission right. in their own way that's right. so as when you connect to them in that way yeah. The doors just automatically open up. And yeah. some don't. Yeah. And some don't. And yeah. that's okay. It just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. But you do want to be strategic, but you definitely have to be in the giving yeah. spirit. Right. So I love that you said that because yeah. people forget that. They always yeah. want, 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 yeah. want. What can I get? What's yeah. in it for me? Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. They forget. You got to give. Yeah. You got to give. Well, I like I like that. And that, that lets me know that I'm in the right place because the mission that God has given me is to empower, inspire, and impact people and help them to live out their God-given purpose. Mm -hmm. And I've realized I don't give them purpose. Mm -hmm. I just operate in my gift. Mm -hmm. And what happens is as a result of walking in my gift, yeah. people that come around me, they they get inspired, mm -hmm. right? And so, but but then I have to I have to be willing to say what's on my heart at the time that is on my heart. I was talking yeah. to a young lady that uh Two days ago, we were having lunch, and she's an older woman. She's mm -hmm. been working corporate America, and she's like, I'm just, I, I, I want to go out and do something else, but I'm locked into the financial uh, security that I have. And I said, listen, you don't know this, but I do. The work that you're doing, you'll be able to make way more if you just let that go. Because mm -hmm. I asked her, I said, um, how much did you bring in for this organization last year? She told me I brought in $6 million. I said, you you think you think that if you was on your own, you couldn't do the same thing? Mm, that's good. And so, and so, you know, so so to walk in that, but if I didn't understand my mission, I would have been afraid that if I said that to her, it would have offended her. Mm -hmm. And I and I and and so the way that I overcome that, Ari, is I say, do you mind if I put my coaching hat on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because what that means is I'm about to probably step on your toes mm -hmm. and put my foot in your toes. Well, you better than me because I just oh let no it yeah, all, yeah no. I just let it all out. <laughs> you know, I, you know, uh, but, but I have uh, no but, filter. But but I uh, but 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 when they give me permission, that's mm -hmm. like okay, yeah. you you gave me permission yeah. now. Like yeah. you know, you, your, your feet hurt because of you because mm -hmm. you gave me. But mm -hmm. when she when I said that to her, and, and this is why this is another reason why I do it. I'm on assignment. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking to get to the pearly gates and the mm -hmm. father's like, Well, why didn't you tell such and such what I told you to tell him? Mm -hmm. Oh father, I was I was I was afraid. Mm -hmm. Afraid of what? You're afraid of the creation? Right. Or the creator. Right. And so that's what guides me to be able to make the moves that I'm making because at the end of the day, I want to hear, Well done, that good and faithful servant. Yeah. Because I was willing to execute what was placed in my heart to do. Mm -hmm. And so to make it full circle. You know, understanding that by going through the trauma of not having my father, mm -hmm. that plays into my ability to relate to more people. So I tell people all the time, what you go through really has nothing to do with you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It has everything to do with you overcoming because there's someone coming behind you that needs you to overcome that so that they can be inspired. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. So I love that you said that about asking for permission um, because I love to do that sometimes yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because it allows me then to one, show up as myself mm -hmm. in my full mm -hmm. purpose, but mm -hmm. then it helps me know that I'm helping somebody that wants to be That's helped. That's right. That's exactly right. Because so, they could easily say no. Mm -hmm. that, and, and, mm -hmm. and when they do say no, mm -hmm. thank you because yeah, I won't absolutely. give it because yeah. you're not ready. Because you're not ready. And so but the, here's the challenge with giving it to them directly sometimes is that it can fall on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. So it's like we just wasted uh, our breath yep. giving them the game or just telling them, if you need to do this. So when I say, when I asked them, do you mind if I put my coaching hat on? And they say no. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have to be okay with that. Meaning yeah. because we we can't want it for people more than they want it for themselves. Yeah. 
So when they accept it, they want it. Yeah. That's when right. they don't, they're not ready, and that's okay too. Yeah, so. and that's why I created this platform, mm. this movement. Really, the release of Chains is a is really a yeah. movement. It's a yeah. movement because, yeah. boy, I don't know more Chains film. It's just been crazy the mm. stories that I get here mm. from people. Yeah. It's just crazy. Um, I'm like little old me. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank mm-hmm. you. Like wow. Um, but it 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 helps with my time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, making the best use of my yeah. time, you know, yeah. when people are ready. It's what yeah. they say when the student is ready, the, the teacher, teacher will appear. appear. That's exactly right. All right. So I want to go ahead and close out this segment. Mm-hmm. And I just want you to, even though we're going to put your information yeah. up, mm-hmm. but for those that are listening, yeah. how can they connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. The, the best way that you can connect with me is through LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Um, when you come on LinkedIn, you just type in Rob YB, the letter Y, the letter B, because I've actually had people Spell out Y W H Y B B yeah so uh, Y B uh, Young Blood and I'll pop up and then you just send me a personalized invitation mm-hmm. and let me know that you heard me on the podcast. Um, mm-hmm. Outside of that, uh, I'm on um, my website is ybconnects.com, um, so folks can go there as well. But what I found is that people will find me faster on LinkedIn than they will if they go to my website. So if they do that, um, that's that's a lot easier because it's a direct personal connection. Versus just going to my website. And that's what you talk about, that relationship no building is so important. No so question. if they wanted to work with you mm-hmm. um, with enhancing their LinkedIn mm-hmm. profile so that mm-hmm. they're attracting the right business to them, mm-hmm. what would be that first step for them? Yeah, I'll say the first thing is once you once you send your invitation through LinkedIn, just let me know. Say, you know, I heard you on the podcast. Uh, I, I'm, I'm struggling when it comes to using LinkedIn. I'd love to talk to you about how we can possibly work together. I think it's so important that people are direct. Mm-hmm. Even though it's going to, you have to make an investment, mm-hmm. you never know what that investment is until you make that first step. So don't allow the fact that you have to make an investment stop you from asking, how can we work together? Yeah. You might catch me at a time where I'm generous. I, mm-hmm. I, I was in a season, Ari, where you know I, I gave my time in coaching away to 30 individuals, mm-hmm. and only about 20 took that. Took mm-hmm. that out. And I mean, I, I was willing to give it, matter of fact, to 30. Mm-hmm. Only 20 took it because they thought it was, like the other 10 thought it was too good to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say just be direct. Mm-hmm. Um, ask, hey, what what will it take for just us like to- Just like your prayers, be right. direct be in your direct. asking. That's right, be direct. <laughs> and just say, hey, what will it take for us to connect and work together? Um, and then I typically, my, my process, I typically hop on like a 15 minute call just so okay. I can get to know people because I don't work with everybody. Yes. I've, I've yes. become very selective nowadays. Yes. Because yes. I have Amen to, to being you know selective. Saying, I, have to be, I learned that from you. Yes. 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 I learned a lot, I learned a lot from you. <laughs> my, uh, my strategy calls, I put a dollar amount to it because of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you were talking about that one day. I said, you know, that's genius. And then you told me, I'm not going to give all the game cause you know, make sure you talk to Ari about it. But, but I, I, I followed your process to a T and then I learned I was able to get more quality clients because those people who are willing to invest at that point, they were willing to invest longer. The people that's like they want the free and some people might be listening and say, I thought you say you get the game away. I do. Mm-hmm. But if I gave all my game away, I, I wouldn't be in no business. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? We so, got to learn how to separate yeah, what I say, the philanthropy from yeah, the business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a thin line. There's a big, huge there's line. There's a huge, there. huge yeah. line. So mm-hmm. so I learned that from you. And so I would say if folks want to work with me, just just be direct. You know, go to my go to my site uh, or come to, come to LinkedIn first. And the reason why I say LinkedIn, and this is a tip, what LinkedIn allows for people to do, it speeds up the time for networking. Mm-hmm. I tell people now LinkedIn is the new business card. Mm-hmm. I don't carry business cards. Mm-hmm. I collect them. But the reason why I don't carry business cards is because I'm probably not going to use them. Mm-hmm. So what I do is if, say, for example, you and I were on a flight, had a great conversation in first class, at we about to approach Richmond or whatever, I say, I say, Ari, do you have a card? Um, and you say, yeah, I got a card. Give me your card. I look at your card. And then I'll say, are you on LinkedIn? And you say, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. Well, is it okay if I connect with you on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that is because if you're giving me permission now, Mm -hmm. once again, going back to permission, and I follow through, then me sending a personalized note, well, now it's like picking up the conversation where we left off. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, if there wasn't a vibe there and I asked you if it's okay to connect, Mm -hmm. you probably tell me no. Therefore, the relationship stops. Mm -hmm. And so by 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 going through that process now, when I connect with you on LinkedIn and you see my invitation, it's going to bring back mm-hmm. that emotion mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then we just continue to build from there. So that's why I tell people to go that route versus just, you know, hit my website. Handing out business cards. Yeah. You know, I and love handing that. out business cards. But it becomes a warm lead as well. As a Absolutely. No questions about it. And you, and then you're automatically in their network. They're in your network. And we can possibly do some work together. So. Well, awesome, awesome. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for coming in my real. Pleasure. Coming my in pleasure. raw yeah. and helping me help us my pleasure release those mental emotional financial and generational chains you guys be sure to follow us on our ig page release the chains be sure to follow me ari squire speaks on all platforms and on linkedin even yeah. i ain't on linkedin come like on that. now he be telling get, me i need get, to get, get on there he always tell me i need to get i need to be on there more um uh, and make sure you guys follow us share subscribe if you're watching us on youtube and we'll see you guys on the next episode No more chains holding me.